Your life lies But the sound has changed As long as I exist You'll never stop the same again Ignore the pain Oh, don't concede The joy is living in your misery I am like a sound I'm a moon I'm a figure in the night Yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, hello. I was just having technical difficulties galore. Hoping that I'm streaming live currently on Rockfin, but that is one sketchy platform sometimes for me. Ho -ha -ha. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. I, I get to the chat. Let me see what's going on. Ellen, all my love, always here being wonderful to me. Uh, no more heroes anymore. Hamish loves it. You're quite right. Good evening, he says. Oh, I've got to get on to here. Here you go. Let me show you. I can show you these, can't I? Mister, I love people who spell Mr. The, the full way. That's really good. It reminds me of a street urchin sound. All right. No more heroes anymore, Mr. Vedmore. It sounds like uh, it sounds like maybe that's what Russell Brand mo models himself on. One of the many heroes that's out there. Maybe maybe that's what he models himself on. Do the old street urchin impression all the time, and everybody will think of Oliver, won't they? Which is, of course, one of my middle names. Oliver is my middle name. I'm always asking for more. Can I please have some more, sir? Yes, probably. Okay. I hope everybody can hear me and it's nothing. Just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in, says Baby. Hello. Hello again. I, I, I tell you what, I am a bit I am a bit Lebowski, that's true. Uh says, Good evening. I'm chilling here, says Hamish loves it. I'm chilling with a jazz cigarette and a glass of hedonist red wine. Radical Dance Faction gig was a good show last night now. Well, I love someone who goes out still gigging it. I mean, it's hard nowadays, isn't it? Everything's so commercialized and so... Uh, I, I mean, we don't want to talk about... that's. What, I mean, no more heroes if we want to talk about all of the the sort of like, you know... That's a perfect example, because... You look at the Stranglers, who started off as like these heroin fueled counterculture, amazing punk, really sharp, direct sound. Uh, I mean, really, really am, am amazing stuff. And then later on, more and more establishment until they're on TV, they're on morning televisions talking about the Swindon roundabout and how it needs to be sorted out. And uh, yeah, yeah, heroes though, heroes. Heroes come and heroes go, don't they? I, you know, I, I thought I was thinking about what to... For for those who uh, hang around a lot with me, they know I just started with this idea of enemies of humanity, which sounds a bit strong, but it's usually going to be about people who um, are not doing good for mankind and are, are working usually with, you know, supposed secret societies or organizations or even the public ones like the World Economic Forum stuff. Um, you know, one of the suggestions, uh, Dan Fournier, I was on his podcast the other day and he was saying he'd love to do uh, one about Mark Carney. Uh, and Mark Carney is a, a perfect example, I think, of um, enemies of humanity. Um, but I, I was I was thinking about this within aspects of like, what 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 is that? So you've got enemies of humanity, and then you've got like this hero worship. I'm looking to like do another like I don't know, maybe they're like uh, ethical or like to kind of look at, at people uh, uh biography is maybe a way to go looking at how people use their power and use their influence maybe that's what who do they think they are is as well you know me searching through family histories to see if there really is a connection with this you know i i i'm obviously in the independent media and i'm obviously questioning the boundaries of stuff so it'd be really nice to know where the boundaries are and i don't think any of us really know where the boundaries are we don't we don't really know where the edges are um so so we, we're all kind of struggling to work out I, I used to have heroes galore i used to have loads of them i used to i used to follow all of them i used to be twisted round in a circle i one day i would hate someone next day would, russell brand i've talked about that you know I, at the start i despised russell brand um then he started do, doing his true stuff. 
the truths and then they went out and did some like actual sort of like campaign work and then i was like oh i like him i think he's gone in a better direction and i like the idea of reforming the character and then he was plugging yuval noah harari and the rest of the gang at me over and over again i'm like okay what the hell's going on here i i liked you again for a little bit and now you're just making me hang around with a bunch of idiots all of the time and then after a while you know it, it, it's a downhill slope, isn't it? No more heroes, no more heroes. But all of all of these heroes, all these massive amount of heroes we've built up, there's loads of them. There's loads of them. We've built up loads of them. Our whole world is full of these like sort of false idols. Like everybody uh, constantly worshiping people who are just feeding you the same stuff the establishment wants you to to look at and i know that sounds mad to some people for some people they see it just black and white they see well russell brand is fighting against the power it's like he's he's from the power and then he's placed somewhere and he's put up on purpose because he's a brilliant effigy to burn once you want to burn something publicly and you just Everybody gets on board with something that has too many skeletons in its closet. And that is allows for this cycle of, you know, bundling you up with the people you don't want to be bundled up with because suddenly you got on their boat. You get on the boat and you don't even know why you're there sometimes. This is why I say about Rumble. It's like if people go across to the Rumble and be like, I'm going to do Rumble exclusive. I understand why they're doing it, man. I understand. I don't make any money. Like... I don't make enough money to live, that's for sure. I, I, I make little bits now, but, um, I, I mean, if someone comes along and offers me a contract to get his regular money, then, oh, man, I'd be, I'd be tempted. Of course I'd be tempted. Of course, but we, it's Peter Thiel, and it, the platform's awful, and it feels like they're just funneling you there. You know, they're just putting you there. They're just making you all have to share this place that they can pull a rug out of from under you at any time because they control the rug they control everything they control the whole surroundings this is the same with um x being really really more and more popular it's hard it's hard anyway i got I got off there no more heroes though hello faithless one uh alan says hello faithless one too we're echoing each other dark commission is in the house of course uh and we've got um polymathing hello polymathing nice to have you with us and uh kelly nice to have you back as well exactly governor yeah right all right you can trust me i'm just like you know gonna come down here and tell you listen i'm just like you you could you could trust me trust me he listened to you val noarari you love him he's great what do you mean malfusion shh Listen to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Yay! Well, he's great. What do you mean? Malfusion. Yes, Malfusion. Um, environmental. I, I, anybody who knows the, my work on Clash Schwab knows the Club of Rome stuff. Uh, I had this conversation on the podcast with Fox Green, the last newspaper podcast, if you haven't watched it. I should probably advertise it, shouldn't I? Go watch the, the... Not right now. Stay here, right at the moment. But in a bit... Go and, and listen to the podcast from me and Fox Screen, which he's got a really extremely positive take on the f on futurism. Uh, I'm not that positive about futurism because <laughs> I I am I I I don't want to act that I, I understand a lot of the dynamics of power, not all of it, of the power structure and how things rise. And I fear that, of course, the best technology is always going to be in the hands of the, the the ones you can't trust to do stuff with it. So, But you can't just say stop developing all technology because of that. You've got to offer an alternative vision. And that's what Fox Green and his camp does, is they offer alternative visions for what our future over at spacecommune.com, uh, which, of course, is a fit entire space commune. They, they, they like it. Everybody working together for the future of humanity. I, I can dig that. I, I, I can understand that. But, you know, there's uh, we were talking on the um, podcast about uh, RFK, his non-governmental organizations, a lot of other stuff. Um, I kind of forgot what I trailed off then. I forgot what I was going to say about that because I got excited about thinking about Fox Green and how much of a nice guy he is. What a very nice chap. 
box screen is. I like talking to him. Um, all right. So food, wonderful food. Oh, yeah, there you go. We know we know these lines. Yeah, and not been to a gig since 2018. The yeah, yeah, that's that's probably about the same time I went to last went to a gig. That's awful, isn't it? That's awful. I used to I used to play uh, like uh, so so, uh, but uh, you'd have to go to gigs here and there to kind of mix in with the community anyway. And back in the day, oh, I was dying. I, I mean, it was so sad because by the time I got up the confidence, I, I had Graves disease for years. So I was like shaking all the time. I was down to eight and a half stone at one point when I was 27 and I was on my way out. I was dying. Um, and then they diagnosed me with Graves disease and were like, oh, we, turns out all of these symptoms you've been told is you've had for 13 years. Oh. And then they gave me a load of stuff. And now uh from then on uh after surgery and radioactive therapy you know I, i'm i'm much better but back then like you know when i finally got the fit enough to be able to get up on stage play guitar and scream out loud with a band behind me um the mu the music scene in cardiff and surrounding areas have just been obliterated uh when i first started working in hotels uh, one of the hotels i worked in was um the holiday inn in cardiff and they had a pub underneath called callahan's and callahan's was also a live music venue there was a guy called gwyn who's really well known music promoter in cardiff area um and he started his there there he was a bar supervisor um and he was like they let him take over organizing the gigs and he brought in loads of people i mean packed the place out it was back when the times were good that was the end of the good times you know it was full of smoke smoke everywhere callahan's i mean it was before they banned smoking so it was just like packed in like everybody crushed in extremely loud music where even if it was winter it was boiling hot because so many people are all crushed into this small irish bar and it but it was such that was the fun of it it was just like this adventurous sort of squeezing through people this maelstrom of trendiness going on you know and it, those would now everything's so sterile in comparison to what you used to have back in the day and it, it saw that happen it, as I got out and started playing, it was just uh, the the amount of people who were naturally at any gig got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it was already hard to get people to go to see you if you're a small band. It gets even harder if the, all the clubs are closing down and they just won't have you on because they're going to have what's on the radio. They're going to have, oh, BBC radio guy is going to do it. Over here, you... um. I can't remember what his name was. Adam Walton, I think his name was. He was the one who was from my area, the one who would decide whether you got on the radio or who, um, uh, I can't remember his name either. Uh, both BBC, BBC would decide whether you get listened to by anybody what a bunch of bastards and they only put people on who were sterilized you know <laughs> who who they agree with not not my band was called bomb alaska so already controversial and we were wild uh zombie baby was one of my favorite songs hello richard johnson how are you i'm glad to hear oh here you go i see the word i see a word i see the uh, yes, yes, as a Canadian, big go fuck yourself for cut Carney. Yeah, and you've got to remember that's um that's Carney who another Carney. Yeah, yeah, it's Carney who um was head of the Bank of England as well. So I mean, we all had our tastes of Carney, and now he's like working on a global scale. Um, did I ever like Bono? No. Zero, zero. I zero liked Bono. I minus liked Bono. I I despised him from. The, I couldn't understand him from the off. I get to be honest. You two in general, I think was uh, when I was young. I loved rock music. I listened to loads of stuff, but I probably leaned to whatever my mum was listening to because she had such a good taste in music. So she liked Queen, Guns and Roses. Uh, Dolly Parton here and there, <laughs> loads of Dolly Parton, uh, Elvis, Fleetwood Mac, you know, just just standard, some brilliant like uh, the Pogues were always uh, on, 
we were in a sealed knot anyway. So in this, we li lived in the 17th century. So the Pogues made a lot of sense in the 17th century. So I had such good music. Why would I want to listen? Why would any, my, um, none of my family liked uh, uh, you two. It just it never, never became something that was. And then as I got older, um, he became like, uh, no, just the annoying guy. And they, they, if you if you're a musician, you realize everything they do is all effects. It's all guitar effects, and not that that's necessarily terrible, but it doesn't allow for like really banging stuff. It's all like this epic movie sound. So I think that's what they did. They coined an epic movie sound that was good for movies. So, um, and and each to their own. But he's from the Houston family. Um, he's from the Houston family that was based in Castle Houston in Ireland. I followed the Houston family back to probably 13, 1400s when they were um, in Yorkshire. Uh, in York itself, uh, Merchant Adventurers Company. Uh, and when Elizabeth took over, they all went over to Ireland and started... Uh, colonizing Ireland and the Houstons were one of the biggest families doing that so there was Houstons then spread out all over Ireland the initial families you know had 10 children they each had 10 children and then every uh, single part of Ireland had a Houston hanging around and they were from this original English colonizing family um Barbara Houston the the woman who publicly uh said nice stuff about Jimmy Savile and Rolf Harris at the worst of times uh she got a massive backlash and I always found that very interesting Interest and wanted to know who what who she was and discovered the whole family is a bunch of contrarists contrarians sorry um they they just everything they ha always have to say the opposite of whatever's going on at the time which is i think why they got fucked off to ireland uh because they did a lot of that you know in in um in the days of uh, kings and queens of um, Britain, if they didn't like you, then they would uh, send you off to some region um, where you you would live for the rest of your life. No, I didn't like Bono. He was a, a there, there's only one word. Oh my God, look at that. There's only one word. Love. That's what it is. The conservative hippie, Jay Frat, is in the house. Uh, I love him. I love you. Uh, he's over there on X. Excellent. Celebrity worship is a flaw in our modern social design, yeah. And I want to talk about that. I want I want to know your view on George Galloway. Then I'll give my view on George Galloway. I think I got quite a good view on George Galloway. I think I've summed him up roughly. You know, I haven't organized what I, I think of him um, completely. Uh, I haven't organized what to, I think of him to say. I'll say it on uh, off the cuff, but um, I think I, I can sum up George Galloway quite quite well and his tactics and what he does. Um, but also very important are the people he associates with, the people he plugs himself, because I don't trust any of it, none of it at all. Don't like it at all. Uh, my my chair's all fuzzy over here. My screen's all fuzzy. Um, Whenever the people need a hero, we shall supply them. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. I was about to start defending George Galloway until about an hour ago. He had Sinn Féin on today and gave uh, the rep accolades. He always does. He's, he's there to um, disrupt. He's there to disrupt. Might as well chum up with Israel. Same thing. Yeah, I, I you know, it's complicated. No, <laughs> it's com. I talk about Northern Ireland. It's complicated. Um, complicated for me as well. My my great great grandfather was Orange Order, so they were quite extreme. And my my dad, uh, he he was obviously instilled with a hatred of Catholics. It really instilled. I, I'm smiling with that. I, smile, I didn't get instilled, but I'm smiling for two reasons. Number one, I remember being young and going through the photo album. And um, there was this photo of my dad from his school days. It was the proper school photo they got sent home with, black and white. Uh, um, 
I don't know. Uh, I can't remember the the the, the is uh, somewhere it's Cantonian or something. He was at. He was at. Um, it was an old boys' school at the time, and it was like I was looking at the picture and I p- pulled it out from the plastic and I bought out the black and white picture and I to look at it closely and I was like, you know, it always it's a smell to photo albums. I miss my photo albums. I wish I could go and have a look through them. Um, and I turned it around to the other side, and it said on the back, uh, the only one thing written on the back, it didn't say like, oh, uh, Cantonian High School or whatever, you know, um, Fitz Allen maybe it was. No, it said, it written in capital letters, I hate Catholics. <laughs> I was just like, oh, wow, okay. I can see what frame of mind my dad was in when he was in school. And I think that got instilled in him. You know, I think there was, I, and, and it's it's like that with all families. I mean, but I, I, my, my uh, Pa Lou was born. So uh, my granddad, uh, my great granddad, Lewis Fedmore, he was born in Cannock. But he was born to a strict, you know, uh, Nor- Northern Irish household that was extremely Protestant, and and they had been at war with Catholics in Northern Ireland. Um, so they were they 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 were there was a lot of hatred. And I think I think because of the troubles is why they left um, and why they started to come. To, I to be perfectly honest, I think that 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 Vedmore branch of the family, the actual name Vedmore. It comes from that what comes in that route i think those those guys um were originally in britain went over there and then came back again eventually because of the troubles so so the troubles affected some of the earlier members of my family and that resonated um uh through i can't remember what the uh, uh other oh yeah yeah the <laughs> the other reason why i found the <laughs> That <laughs> my dad, I was chuckling there about the idea of um my my granddad being a uh, great granddad or great great granddad so I'd be in Orange Order, and my dad and stuff was because um my dad was a terrible cheat, an awful cheat. I, it's like so opposite to to what I've uh, tried to be in my life. I've uh, I've I, I I've 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 I don't think I've. I cheated on a girl since I was maybe uh, 18, 17 or 18 years old. So I was young and I I, um, I felt really bad. I didn't want to do so. I, 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 I didn't, I, I've been in like, whenever I've been in relationships, I kind of really strict with being honest and trustworthy because I saw what my dad was like and what it did to my mum. So I feel really guilty because I I used to have to sit around and I was like central to helping my mum and dad through a divorce. But the reason I laugh is because every person my dad slept with was Catholic. (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> he wrote like from that from the, the the hypocrisy of a human was very clear to me very very early in someone who should possibly be one of your heroes my my own father with his hatred for catholics yet love of catholics i really mean love of catholics so don't let him near a catholic he he, he will chat them up honestly not so much anymore not so much anymore um Sinn Féin get their funds from the World Economic Forum and they support Palestinian authority. Um, not, you know, not surprised that Sinn Féin's got their fingers in a lot of these things. Uh, a lot of these official, like, you don't get close to power unless you are got an angle and you're working on the side. Yeah, I just don't believe it. I don't believe it. You just don't, you don't get it. And what do you do with power when you get into power is then extremely important. Are you just going to make a little bit of a protest or are you actually going to do something or are you going to claim you do something and what you're doing is just trying to be as extreme as possible for the sake of it to show a protest? I think there should be a, a I could say it again, spoil a ballot party, spoil your ballot Spoil. We, we got to do it in mass. More spoiled ballots than votes for the top people in power. That's what I want to see. I think that will send the message that needs to be sent. Um, and I think we should have a, we should have a grassroots campaign. Grassroots punk. Yeah. 
The audience is old and youngish, which is cool. Next gig is in the 100 Club with Dave Vanny and the Damned and Al Damage. Al, Al, uh, Al Damage, I suppose. Uh, punks get old together. Yeah, it's a niche. Yeah, it's really weird. I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm a, you know, slight bit too late. I, I, I mean, a massive Clash fan, massive Stranglers fan. Of course, I, I liked uh, uh, Dead Kennedys before the whole <laughs> heroes proving themselves again. There you go, another one. Jello Biafra has been like, oh, vax yourself up. Fat Mike from No FX. Vax yourself up. Um, uh, Trey Cool, Frank Edwin Wright the <laughs> Third of Green Day. Vax yourself up. You know it, it was just such a a punk sellout, and I think that punk sold out a long time ago. I mean, they just get it's like movements get co opted, and even when you listened, like for me I, I was later so for me i i started listening the first bands the punk bands i started listening to properly it was like green day and no fx and um uh, offspring and stuff and all of them are sellouts all of them all of them all of them put on this face of punk and they all of them were going to sell out in some way like over the the, the rest of my life all of them so not punk. <laughs> so not punk. Unless punk is is being horrible to me. I love Bongo intensely. Bongo. <laughs> um, oh no. I'm not sure what Bongo is now. I probably said something earlier. Um, all my heroes have disintegrated into dust. Yes, because ideas. You listen to someone give you ideas, and then you decide on keeping your ideas or the value, um, or or applying something to your, or attempting to apply something to your natural, moral, and ethical sort of um, your soul. <sighs> and yet, you you people tend to get too hooked up on heroes and i think george galloway is a very good example of how you can go through nearly every single person that goes on his show you honestly there's a load of shows like this i i do a lot of research on people and i'm currently studying like one of the people i i ended up having to study because of my former relationship was i was trying to i'm still trying to understand why someone leaked uh one of my previous articles to robbie martin who's abby martin's brother um and that made me go back and look into robbie martin and abby martin and then i was like whoa i already like abby martin looks like a construct nowadays i mean she was all pro book book as well she was pro stick it in your arm um over the top pro stick it in your arm and her uh husband was ex-military operations who seemed to be like get, they get out of military operations and they're like we we were against it now and we're the main news source that you should come to to listen to uh, i i don't believe all of this like russia today crowd um a load of people who started on the Russia Today. Listen, if you study intelligence ops, the first thing you do in media organizations is if the enemy has a media organization in your own country, you co-opt it at every single level and you have your guys fill it up completely. So the people who are recruiting whoever's going to be on the shows end up being co-opted by the nation state. And yet they're still going to put through the Russian angle, put everything through, but they need everything there to control. And then they look, those people look like the counter movement. They're the antithesis. They're the, it's a Hegelian dialect being created in front of you and shoved in your face. They love doing that Russia Today stuff, especially. They loved it. It's like the people who were on... But it's just oh awful, awful. I, I found I, I find a lot of them I don't trust them at all. Um 
uh, and the people George Galloway has on, and people like Abby Martin he has on. Oh, what a surprise! And then I saw him on an interview with Glenn Greenwald. I was like, oh, look, that's a construct. Oh, I, well, who are you going to have on next, George? Next? Oh, well, he, he had on uh, Maria Farmer on multiple occasions, and Maria Farmer, one of them, she was uh, having to go about me without saying my name on his show. <laughs> so, so it's like she he has on everybody i see is like is a made up persona it don't go on don't go on george galloway if you're a real person and you don't want to be eventually labeled as something don't go on george galloway i think it's a, it's 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 a, a a good chance that if you you get offered on george galloway that you you're probably actually that's a question okay okay if george galloway comes and asked me to be on his show. I'm going to go on his show, and I'm going to say straight to his face that I think he's a construct. Yeah. Do you think I'll ever be on his show? Okay. Let's have a a, a little look down at what else. Yeah. Completely. See you next Tuesday. Classic schoolyard language. George G is the sa- shadow farage again. There you go, balance of the scales, Hegelian. Yeah, it's it's all like this. I mean, I do not trust. It's so and and okay. And another thing, like you you need someone to fill up that protest movement. So you know the big parties are at a risk, and you want to create a fear of this other dangerous independent movement come in. So you have this person who's on the periphery, he's always been seen as the enemy by the mainstream media, come in and he takes control in every by-election where they got this vacuum. And then it's like, oh, look, it's the protest. And then they'll have someone come out, like Rishi Sunak did, and say, oh, we're in danger. Our democracy is in danger. And that rallies their supporters for the next time. And so George Galloway doesn't last very long afterwards. He lasts like maybe a a couple of turns as a cycle at most. So he's been put there, or it feels for me, like he gets the opportunity given to him because that's one of his roles. Fill up this vacuum of space within democracy. Boom. Make sure no one who could actually make change. Because what's he going to do? What's he done in the past? Has he made massive changes and show? No, he's going to ask a couple of questions on in um, Parliament, and we won't hear much else from him. And if you don't bother with the system, you won't notice because he's part of the system. That's part of the system. Yes, you've got two main parties, and then you've got another party and another party and another little party and a little party and a little party and George Galloway. That's the system. It's what the system looks like. He's part of the system, boys and girls. He's one of the two sides. He's like a pressure valve. Yep. I agree with that. Um, my last punk gig was either 999 or Peter and the Test Tube Babies back in 1999 in Derby. God, I thought you mean it was in 999. I was going to be like, wow, now that is proper punk. Before Baroque. <laughs> Baroque and punk. Um, what's your take on Ryan Garcia? Um, multiple people have um, asked me about Ryan Garcia. Have I? Uh, do I even know who Ryan Garcia is? <laughs> Oh, I'm terrible. Um, should I know who Ryan Garcia is? More likely, should I should I be typing it in now? Should I go? Should, should I have a little look who Ryan Garcia is? I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. May I say hello? Ah, oh, look, I'm actually going out on Rockfin. I'm going to say hello to people on Rockfin. That's wonderful because the last time it didn't go out at all. Rockfin, ha 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 ha! I shall say how wonderful. Um. I don't know who Ryan Garcia is. Um, is he uh, good or is he bad? You tell me. Um, because uh, my bet is is you're asking me because oh god, it looks like it looks. I don't. I don't. I don't even want to bother looking. It looks like I do. It looks like I. I know. It looks like I'm looking at Jackson Hinkle or something. I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. And again. There's another one, Jackson Hinkle. That's that's some um, that's some um, that's some um, 
manipulating. You need to funnel these people over here. Oh, well, they're the kind of like anti-Zionists who are on the the right and libertarian spectrum. Very small amount of them will funnel them over here. Oh, he gets a lot of respect from the conservatives or and these and the left wing. So he picks up from all of these different factions, little people who were like venting out at the main candidates and and that that. Keeps uh, Galloway sleeps with his hat on. Yeah, his hat on his knob. Got a hat on his knob. Yeah. Right. Uh, what have we got? Um, the, the the rebellion festival. Oh my god! Wow. There's a lot of that. Um, my my one of my my bestest bestest buddies was in a band called Dirty Revolution. Uh, they they played all of the fest the punk festivals around the place in um. In uh in Britain, um, any uh, you probably you probably seen them if you go to enough punk gigs. Um, they they've broken up now years back, but um, I I mean there's some really good festivals, especially I think you're talking about the one in Blackpool. Um, <laughs> and it makes me laugh because I see Hamish and I think of a hamster that once got saved from there. Anyway, I won't get on to that. Um, can't stand Biafra, yeah. He ruined dead Kennedys. Now he performs with Ukrainian Nazis and Peru. I know, it's just so terrible, isn't it? Because dead Kennedys was so, I was so good. I mean, it's so good. It's so good. Um, but this is, the ones who are able to brand it the best probably don't have ethics because they can brand. If you can mark market things well then you're probably not got a soul <laughs> i think bill, i i'll agree with bill hicks on that one um doesn't george galloway have ties to jimmy savile i'm not sure about that but i i i wouldn't be surprised if they know knew each other or were around in the same car but i i'm, I'm not sure tell me tell me we still play those stakes hello uh, sorry, I didn't see. I didn't see the name. I was I was too busy going through everything here. I say hello to Antarctic Monkey too. Hello. I know I've already read out some of your stuff. I'm saying hello, ah, Mahatma, and and you. Hello, Mahatma, La Volence. Um, let's see. Uh, that's very interesting to me. Houston history. Have you any idea if he's a blue blood? Uh, what do you mean by blue blood? What if he's royal? Uh, by decree, or if he's selected, because yeah, yeah, the Houston's. Um, I think I think they'll go back to something because they're so so high up, and um, it's depending on why the sun is in the name. It might be that they're son of Hugh, and that would suggest Welsh or Irish royalty depending on how far you go back, could suggest maybe, maybe um, it would suggest uh, French, maybe German, but I would think that it would suggest Welsh, son of Hugh and Hugh's son. Um, I think I remember in the article actually uh, saying, because I think it is, in some parts they called him Hewitt's son. So Hugh et son and that's probably come from hugh app son or hugh's uh hugh's son and I, I i'm not sure i'm not sure but i would think that they they probably go back to welsh royalty or irish royalty by the sound of their names and maybe that's why they were selected for ireland maybe who knows um her great granddad shot his maid while she was she was just uh, preparing food, she was in the larder. They didn't. He didn't dislike her or anything. He just walked into the the kitchen and he had a revolver and he shot her in the back. And they they the the um his son was uh in the is it in the Irish Parliament um and was uh basically got him a light deal he was a barrister got him a light deal he got sent to a mental home for about a really cozy one for about five years and then quietly released back to home afterwards um but the houston's had loads of you should uh look at dame allen's stuff on uh twitter about Hewson's. Uh, he is amazing, did amazing research on her dad. 
<laughs> and her dad said anything that was the opposite at the time. He was saucy, really saucy. Uh, what are some good Irish punk bands? Well, I would describe the Pogues as as punk. I would describe the Pogues. I mean, uh, Sally McLeman. Uh, we walked to the station in the rain. We kissed him as we put him on the plane. It's just like it's all got punk about it with a, a crash in the cymbals against your head. I mean, it was just uh, really just worked out well. It's, it's, it, I, I think you have to understand that I, whenever Irish music comes out, oof, uh, I don't know. I don't think. Would you class Finn Lizzy as punk? Is this more no, not really. But it, it kind of like the, something else. When you got Irish, something else comes out. Anybody else? Come on, someone else, save me. It's Irish punk bands. Thank you very much. Um, George hugged him like he was a long lost friend. Yeah, all oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Pro when George was drinking milk like a cat because he'll do anything for money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember that. It was ooh, ooh. Do you mean like that? It was like ooh. Um, uh, went the brown shirt for the goof. Yeah, they all went. I mean, the the punk fans really, really did just. Oh yes, of course, of course. Historically, the stiff little fingers. Yeah, uh, the biggest I can figure. Yes, of course. I didn't know the undertones were from. Island, but yeah, um, because didn't uh, was his stiff little fingers who did, um, and then I'll start. What's the uh, what's that? Oh, what, what is that song? Oh, the one with Ulster in the title, it's on my playlist anyway. Um, be a uh, clan ad, ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, bewitched, ha <laughs> uh, ha Oh, bewitched. Oh, Cl Clanad, I, I laugh at that because a friend of mine got tickets to him once and it was like torture for him. It was uh, it was quite good. Um, yeah, it's a big surprise. Anarcho-punk was big for me. What the heck did the folks start believing in the government? They always believed in the government, didn't they? Amy, my lovely Amy, hello. Or are they secret CIA operatives? Oh, there's a lot of those around. The CIA is one of the biggest funders in the world, and they know how to get to you. They will use any way possible and any person they can to make you do what they want to do because they got so much bloody money and they got to create, keep creating money, which was part of what Epstein's job was with a, um, with intelligence was creating money to fund other operations. I think um, they would make it look like there was loads of losses going on, but I'm, I, you know, there's so many, a range of operations um, and they needed to be funded. John Lydon has become a, f a fat fax ed capitalist. It's so bizarre, isn't it? It's not bizarre. It's, it's, it's just, it, it's shocking, sad. False prophets, mm, suicidal tendencies, bulimia banquet, but whole service. Beastie Boys. Oh, yes. Oh, okay, the, the Beastie Boys. I love that. I mean, uh, all of the Beastie Boys, everything from. Uh, before and afterwards, the Beastie Boys just uh, rock. Some of their later uh, albums are just Hot Sauce Committee, is it called? Um, that's got some mega tunes on. One of my favorite tunes on there. Oh, my God. Beastie Boys. Class. Um, 50, oh, showing your age. Don't tell people your age. Don't tell people your age. This is an ask. It's a live. Ask me anything. I can't take this back. You've done it now. Lots of bands get scooped up and turn uh, corporate money makers. RDF and never got famous, but uh, a small um, uh, festival favorite. Bongo is Bono. Oh my God! Because Bongo is Bono. I'm an idiot. Wait, <laughs> I can't even think about the relevant stuff. Uh, you know, it's really interesting that we talk about like all your hero your heroes are all completely definitely humans. They they are definitely humans. And humans um sometimes like can be I, I I'm scared to say it, but I think about it. 
I think maybe I'm willing to go with the Milgram experiment and say 66% of humans are pretty much douchebags. <laughs> no, they don't mean to be. They just, they automatically go to what the easiest is and the easiest is being a bastard. So you can't, they can't really help it. They always end up in bastard zone, doing bastard things and, and selling out to anybody. And that's 66% without the pressure because as soon as you apply the pressure, it's like 90%, but maybe more. You know, even the nice ones become arseholes once everybody thinks an arsehole is the opposite of nice. Oh, it's too confusing. Um, too confusing. The fall were the first gig I went to. I can't imagine. Oh my god! Uh, we, let's not talk about first gigs. I can't even. I, I can't even work out what my first gig was. What was my first? I got, I got brought up with um in beer tents with music playing and uh all the time uh and the first band that i can remember that they were really proud in the seal and they got on sealed not that they they got on that i remember being like like wowed by when i was really young as well was new model army that was that was probably but there was a fair few a straw head i think played once as well and they were awesome live but yeah early early music early music oh we're talking about music but it's interesting we're talking about music it's interesting we're talking about the heroes and we're talking about uh people like you know galloway and others and uh, the people who get put up there as these hero characters that, that give us the mythos that, that allow us to support and the first thing that we go and talk about is music the thing that catches us the most, the thing that makes us most emotional, and the thing that makes us really, really just like, because a lot of these is about gigs. You know, this is one of the saddest things. The, these venues that used to be smoky dives that would you know, possibly, uh, you know, take years off your life for hanging around in them, they were the best. That's what humanity's about. I want a return to having smoky venues, an option to having smoky venues, smoke-filled venues where you can barely breathe when you go inside and everything's too hot and the floor is sticky, really sticky. And they probably didn't clean it properly and they probably won't clean it properly in nighttime either. You know, I, I want the option to have that. I don't want anything, everything to be sanitized by law and legality because that's what's happening is that there's this every time they take something the right away it, it it automatically means that you get a sanitization sanitize sanitize until it's like the city center they got now it's like oh everybody's in orderly everybody's orderly except there's tramps everywhere because no one can afford anything so they they ruin all of the they take away all of the 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 fun disorderly places, and out of it comes a load of poverty and homelessness. That's what it seems like to me. Still, oh, black frag uh, anthrax. Now we are talking. I I'm a little bit. I, I'm I, I'm a little bit. Uh, younger than most of you i like saying that i like acting like i'm the little baby but i'm i'm uh, uh gonna be 44 next month and uh and so some of my I, I mean i loved punk early on but when i went to start going to gigs properly it was to go and watch um metal you know well ugh, i went and watched food fighters but they were supporting prodigy uh, in about 97 but other than that it was metal bands like entombed machine head you know i i missed out on getting to see um uh pantera with dimebag daryl man that would have been just epic just epic he's just so good by i was into the metal by that point uh, every gig i went to was um a sweaty uh mosh just one big mosh pit uh controlled opposition yes 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 gb news unbelievable george's suspect gb news is unbelievable it's such an obvious it's like the the pandemic starts they're like quick we haven't got this we, we we haven't got this place where we can control this side of the the conversation quick set something up as quickly as possible let's employ someone that we know everybody trusts and then they get on um uh, what's his face i'm not allowed to mention his name Neil Oliver. <gasps> I said it. I said it. I'm not allowed to mention his name because if I say anything about Neil Oliver, I get ratioed bad. 
bad people like they, that's a hero there that's, that's we, we, we're here we're talking about not having heroes neil oliver is a massive british hero now there's loads of people who are libertarians disenchanted conservatives working class disenfranchised labor voters who are all looking at Neil Oliver as he's some sort of wise philosopher king who sits there and says, oh, we've got to think about these things that no one else is saying and I'm the one who's saying it. Everybody goes around him and treats him like he's a big hero. And if you criticize him at all or take the piss out of him at all, people get super pissed off really quick. They love Neil Oliver. They love him. I mean, they love him in a way that is pseudo-sexual, I think. I think it would be nipple rub love. It, they would go so far as to be like, can I touch you, please? That's how much they love them. And I think that's, I, I, I think it might be a little bit unsanitary, but that's up to you. But I, I think what, what that, and he might not want it, but I think what the pr real problem is, is that that is just a real big flashing light alarm to me when you have that like people react like that defensively about someone um everybody should be able to not be put on a pedestal and be wrong you know that's really important these guys are put up as people who are nearly right all of the time if someone's nearly right all of the time be suspicious because humans naturally get things wrong i will get things wrong you will get things wrong and acting like we know what everything is is the reason why we keep getting the wool pulled over our eyes and shafted because we don't we need to work together to learn we need to understand we need uh to have the lessons that are good and the lessons that are bad and mix them all together and and, and make our own moves from that but we should have the the fact that people can be wrong and there is a lot that where Neil Oliver, he is top hero. They are like uh, deep inside him, deep, deep, deep inside the Oliver. Some people and uh, some people watching this now, I'm so sorry if you're deep inside him and you're like, but why would you be saying this about my Neil? I, I, that's the problem. Stop it. If you're doing that now, if you feel angry about me criticizing someone who you've put up as a hero, you, you, you stop right now and realize you're definitely wrong. You're definitely wrong. He's a human. And he, some people agree with him and some people disagree with him. And some people will like him and some people won't like him. It's not mandatory to like Neil Oliver because you're in the independent media. It's not mandatory to like George Galloway, because you're part of the independent media. It's not mandatory to like anybody else because you're on it. You have to take people by their, uh, each case in particular and not think that because they're right about something, that makes them right. They're right about something. They're not, they're not right. They're right about, they're right about something. They're right about an issue. They're right about a subject. They're right about something that you find emotionally uh, that you're emotionally invested in and they use that that emotional investment's massive man if if i i never know i i never know if people are going to agree or disagree and i love having arguments with people uh, about stuff that i think is right and they and sometimes i i always try and approach it now with being like i can still be wrong about this I can say my point of view and say what I believe, but I can't say that's definitely the way it is and expect someone else to change their mind. The argument I make has to be good enough and that has to be a two-way street where the other person is willing to hear that argument and that's not always so. And I'm not always ready, uh, 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 knowing from a human level, I'm not always ready to hear the right thing at the, the right time. Sometimes we don't. Uh yeah yeah loads of market Marxist and punk I I, I this you know the, the a, a, my my friend who was in Dirty Revolution he he said something that was very true about punks he said the difference between a hippie and a punk is only that a hippie will set your bed on fire with you in it if you do something bad to him that's what that's this a, a a, a punk will punch you in the face 
you know that, that, that that's why it's basically there's both side both hippies and punks have this communal feeling you know they share the same houses they share the same, anybody who's in the punk scene knows that you'd go over a friend's house who's a punk and it, they, there's people sleeping on every sofa you know uh, I, <laughs> I i had to sofa surf the punk community on many a time in the past and i was not the only one who would wake up in the various sofas <laughs> full of punks because that's how punks lived you know <laughs> the punks live together communally and i think there's uh, there's there's an elephant uh, element of them being basically somewhere between uh some somewhere on the outskirts of hippie hippie life and marxism you know um smith's dead <laughs> smith's dead which smith there's so many dead smiths uh Leiden was part of the king mob the uk equivalent of the situationist international run out of mclaren sex shop along with bernie Rhodes. at the time they were all serving the liberal party holy hell in a handbag Leiden was part of the king mob i why well, i i gotta find out more about this um I would be interested in learning more about that Mahatma Levolence. And if you uh, want to send me some stuff on something like Twitter or something, or just on newspace.com or johnnyvedmore.com about that sort of stuff, then maybe I can do um, a video about it sometime alive about it. We can go through it. Um, I like these uh, things that happened, especially, I mean, UK, New York, um, LA, these sort of. Uh, these sort of places, I say UK is a, an entire country next to those sort of places as well. You, you have some really interesting groups and gangs, um, financial music gangs, all sorts. I mean, I think about um, uh, what is it, Studio 54, whatever it's called, over in um, New York being a place that was a center, central hub for not only art scenes, music scenes, a hero generation device, but also establishment and intelligence fuckery all in the same place. And I, I, when I've studied the Black Hand series, that was the same thing going on in London, like the London scenes. I think there's a lot of uh, these things really interest me, these sort of mobbish type things. Uh, it's a no. I'm just wondering what he would have done uh, re COVID 19. Oh, God. Uh, you like rock a bit? Well, of course. I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of um of uh rockabilly. Um, I I don't mind it. Don't get me wrong. I I my but my I got buddies who are really big fans of it. So they, they uh, them playing it is enough for me to uh. <laughs> I was also um. Uh, I don't know if any of you UK giggers have heard of uh, Johnny Cage and the Voodoo Groove who uh, have been regular giggers around Britain. Well, Danny Lambert, I worked with him for a, a while. I went to school with him too. Um, and he's a lovely boy. Uh, but they, they were, you know, that sort of music scene is drug heavy. Drug heavy, party hard, you know. Uh, it goes with the music. Does go with the music, rockabilly especially. Um, never my scene. I'm just a smoker. I know. I, know. <laughs> I just like to smoke weed too much. Um, look into Killing Joke. Tavistock beginnings and quoting Brzezinski, uh, Process Church and UN links. Uh, I love uh, Dana's stuff on the Process Church and Brzezinski. I've got to look into more because of my Harvard work. Um, it's been coming up that way. Uh, I don't know who Ryan Garcia is. No, no. I think he's an American thing more than anything. I don't mind Rockabilly. Not followed it, though. Cramps okay, from what I remember. Yes. Um, most of them are actually where Now, I, 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 I you know, I, I, what are you talking about there? Because are you talking about... Um, uh, let me see. 
Well, I, I, one thing that just reminded me of then was um, an interview I was in the other day where someone said, you know, it's, or something I was in the other day where someone said to them, oh, he said in the podcast with Fox Green that um, the people who make the best agents are the people who don't even, uh, aren't actually aware that they're agents and they're working for the CIA or intelligence. Um Making me ah polymathing hi. Uh, making me laugh was I was adjacent to all these punk bands as a metalhead. Most of my faves are dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the good punks, the proper punks, killed themselves with their behaviour. <laughs> I guess punk is all about that, you know. Um, brilliant to hear this. Like a group of punks are in here. Um, cramps were messed up with uh, by. Miles Copeland III, Stu's brother, uh, CIA father. Oh, what a surprise. There's a lot of that around. Oh, uh, one powerhouse still going stronger. Sepultura, indeed. Red Marta, Red Marta, Red Marta, Red Marta. Yeah, um, I completely loved Sepultura when I was young. Like, like when I first started um, playing in a band, that was one of the ones we covered. With, Woods, bloody Woods. It was awesome. Um, yeah, really over the top music. Lovely, lovely. <coughs> Folk can't handle it today, though. Ah. Killing joke process, church links, Jesus. All right. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, says Anna. T.S. Anna Anna I can't say it. Anna T.S. Anna Okay, let me try again. Anna T.S. Anna Okay, not going to do it. Not going to do it. I just got to call you Anna. She says, oh, wow. <laughs> That's all. Royal. Yeah, Royal. So we're talking about Blue Blood. I'm really behind on these messages. Oh, American Boxer came out on Twitter last week as a rape victim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, two years, at two years old? Shit, man. Reckons he'd been taken to... Mo uh, I, 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 you know, if... Uh, uh, two years old or 12 years old? Because, I mean, he, I, he would not remember anything if he was two years old, of course. He would not. Um... Andrew Tate. No, I, 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 I didn't know anything about it. And that sounds like an awful story. Um, if it's true, uh, awful. I mean, I, everybody who knows my life knows that I was affected by something. Um, uh, I mean, it, 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 you can't even, like, to get over, uh, you're trying to get over the idea of what someone wanted to do to you is bad enough. The idea of trying to get over something that someone did do to you is extreme. I can't, I can't even imagine. I can't, I, I feel uh, emotional about that stuff. Um, I was, uh, but again, you know, heroes can develop from uh, somewhere where you feel emotional. I feel uh, like, well, for me, I'm stuttering my words because when I was young, when I was between the ages of 9 and 11, I was groomed by a, a, a pedophile called Paul Avanci. He changed his name to Paul Reese afterwards. Um, I was groomed for about two years, so he told me in detail about how what he was going to do with me uh, over and over again. And he was obviously looking for the opportunity, and it was just a matter of luck my parents that I didn't end up being alone with him in that time I just like uh but he befriended my dad would come round, would bring uh toys of course and things like that and always try and get into a situation where he could get closer and which was just waiting and of course I was in a sealed knot so he was in a sealed knot he was in the regiment too so I'd go and sometimes you're out and you know we would go off on the sealed not campsite we'd leave our parents as soon as we arrive on a thursday or friday and we wouldn't see them again until like 12 o'clock in the night time we'd see it quickly all the kids would be together wandering the campsite together and we'd keep each other safe but then at the end of the night everybody would get go off in different ways and that left a perfect place for people like that 
to but so i was worried the entire time and i've discovered that during the time i hadn't said anything he molested a boy who was three and a half um and when i w w when i eventually like he come around my house one time i broke down in tears told my mum um what what had been going on and so she got him out of the house as politely as possible um and then and then um i went through uh giving wit a witness statement but they told me and they should, probably shouldn't have you know as a uh i was like 11 years old and uh they they told me that this he had raped a three and a half year old um and it blew my mind for the next 20 something years I couldn't get over it. That was bad enough, you know. I I couldn't even imagine what that because I I had to I had to imagine because I I felt so guilty. I felt like that had happened because I hadn't said anything for that entire time. Um, and and that sort of thing is bad enough, you know. That sort of thing can wreck you, and it did. It it left me like I I was unable uh, the first time that I was able to uh manage myself enough to be able to get over this and to do things I wanted to do in life and to get to put the anxiety behind me of what had happened to me um and from all the guilt I felt about it about not being able to stop this kid who's still in my head as a three-year-old perpetually being abused by a guy that uh, you know is is probably dead now so it's like it, the idea that that some a kid goes through the actual pain of it i can't even imagine i can't i honestly can't imagine i know how much it affected my life negatively to have just gone through the grooming process for that period of time, which was psychological torture, and then and then to go through this uh, on top. I mean, it was all just mental torture rather than it was physical. At the same time, like I was in, I, um, I grew up, my whole family was, it was violence everywhere. It was just, we were being the, beating the hell out of, but there was nothing sexual there at all. It was, it was all like, all the violence in my house was my dad, who was like, sometimes like 18 stone and Kashinkai karate trained, beating the shit out of us. So, um, and then my older sisters beating each other. Sorry to bring down the, the thing, but we'd seen about, um, Ryan Garcia, what you're saying about that, you know, I, I, I know what what the idea of thinking about something like that when it happened to me when I was ten, eleven, as a as a as a as a child, I'm not sure how much you would be able to remember, but I can tell you, trauma sticks with you in the back of your head, and however much we like want to believe that someone's got over something or someone's past the point of risk from an event that's happened to them. Um, it's not so. It always repeats with you, even if you don't remember it fully. Right. Sorry to have brought that down. Let's try and not, let's try and not talk about uh, anything that depressing. Oh, look, depressing comes up in this. Hamish loves it. It's funny. The little scene um, surprised me with the scandemic came along it hurt financially, and it was depressing to see a lot of the so-called rebel punks and New Age travellers get taken in. Yes, indeed, it was. I was illiterate. The drummer taught me how to read and write. So, <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh, m Musicians helped bring me up. Penny Rimbaud, I don't know. Some of this, I really should. Um, uh, probably, when we got a full house, I should be um, more taking only the quest i you should put a cue before it if you want to ask me a question particularly i'm i'm just going through it one by one but i might have to get through some of these comments quicker at the moment pogues definitely dodgy management indeed well it's hard it's it's hard to manage shane mcgowan i mean he was off his tits most of the time sometimes he couldn't perform my um mum and sister went and saw the popes um which Shane McGowan was in after in between one of his hiatuses from the Pogues and uh he was just drunk on the floor and wasn't singing 
So <laughs> he was just on the floor with a microphone and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's, it's hard to manage that. <laughs> and uh, the band, I think, had a really hard time with it as well. Um, Avalon Holloway's wiki is a walking contradiction, says he's a staunch anti-Zionist, and I also support and also supports Brexit, as well as claiming to be a socialist conservative, which is a funny way of saying Fabian socialist. Doing a lot of work on the Fabians at the moment, trying to understand. Uh, his dad was lieutenant colonel in the army. He went to Brentwood Spook School. Interested in these ah alternative Ulster. Yeah, there you go. I am really far behind, aren't I? I'm really far behind. Um, so I'm just gonna skip through some of these. Just look at some of these quickly. Ooh, you can you can pause them if you want. Uh, punk nihilism, crypto crypto Nazism. Yeah, it's very strange, isn't it? Um, buy my butter. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he does the butter adverts, doesn't he? Well, uh, uh, Leiden's a, a, a pretty much um, a done. He's done, isn't he? Hi, says Anna Tears. And again, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> um, oh, Alphabet Cat. Hello. Asking a question. I like that. What do you think about the Hitchens brothers being change agents? Yep, yep. I have my suspicions now, and uh, what with their dad being a Navy man and P. Hitchens U turn during the sea situation and taking the bop bop. Indeed, Peter Hitchens, I, I, I mean, look, look, look. So, what was it that I saw him on the other day? He was in a. Um, uh, a video the other day. Maybe I can find it on my 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 downloads. I'll try and remember as I do it. But he was commenting on on. Um, oh, I remember. He was commenting on the term Holocaust being used um, when referring to Gaza. Um, but they're very careful because what they do is people say there's a Holocaust going on. And they say, look, that's terrible that they're, they're comparing it to the Holocaust. Now, they're two different things. Holocaust, a Holocaust, and the Holocaust. One is a Holocaust. The other is the Holocaust. They both come up in the first definition of Holocaust. Try it. Go go check right now. Type in to your search engine uh, meaning Holocaust, Holocaust meaning. And it'll say one dot um, mass death or destruction or death and destruction on a mass scale, especially by fire um, or nuclear, e.g. nuclear holocaust. That's nearly word for word, the number one. Definition, one dot, definition, uh, mass destruction and death, or death, um, by fire, uh, usually by fire, um, or nuclear, e.g. nuclear holocaust. Then underneath it says, um, it mentions the holocaust, yeah, and it says about, that. that's underneath it, within the first definition, it's attached to the first definition, but understand something that Holocaust, to have a Holocaust, you have to have mass destruction, usually by fire. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but missiles work by making things explode and burning things. And the people who will either be destroyed by the explosion, the initial explosion, or will burn to death, will be people. Um, who have been hit by the missile in places that got hit, gets hit by the missile. So that's what missiles do, yeah? They burn things. And what we're seeing in Gaza is mass destruction. Definite. Definite. No doubt about it. Mass destruction and or death. And or death. Definitely. Mass destruction. Mass death. By fire. That's what we see. That is dictionary one point 
definition of a Holocaust. It's not a definition of the Holocaust when referring to this. So that disingenuous uh, argument is used as a nuance by someone like Peter Hitchens. So he comes out and, and says, you know, is brought out to say that clever line that you need to have someone else who understands the definition of Holocaust uh, in the studio to argue against it there and then if you want to um, argue against him. So his arguments are all uh, are mostly fallacies. Like Peter Hitchens, I think he was, of course, the worst of the Hitchens brothers in many people's eyes. But then what did Christopher Hitchens do? He acted all anti-establishment, anti-Kissinger, and then supported the, pe the the very essence of perpetual limited warfare with Iraq in that sense. Like some of his talks during that, defending what was going on, uh, what that was being planned in Iraq, it was just, it just made no sense. Um, and uh, straight away, it's like those conflicts, you write a story, uh, you write a, a books about uh, the New World Order, how terrible they are, and how Henry Kissinger is one of the worst people in the world and should be sentenced to death. And the exact um, essence of Henry Kissinger comes out in war policy, and you defend it. I do, just, how can you not see through it? How can you not see through it? Well, uh, he got seen as a hero, of course. Got, oh, of course he got seen as a hero. And he was the best out of the two. Peter Hitchens is a, mostly a snide. Um, he's really clever, careful with what he says and how he says it. And he won't be put in a room with someone who can argue without becoming extremely aggressive and defensive towards him. So I saw another interview with him recently. Um, and I don't like watching Peter Hitchens interviews, but I like watching people who I think I've sussed out acting and manipulating. So I, that's why I watch Peter Hitchens. I watch Peter Hitchens like I watch Russell Brand. I watch someone who thinks is thinking, how can I make these people believe the things that I want them to believe? You know, this is something that we see constantly around that keeps happening. They keep doing that. So keep watching them, but watch them knowing that they're trying to stick stuff in your head and watch how they're doing it. Did the same with Ben Shapiro. Um, sat down and listened to all of his whataboutism. Like the majority, 90, I, I say 96%, but it's like, 90% uh, of what Ben Shapiro does is what about ism. It's, yes, but you say this, and look over here, they're doing this, so that means that's okay, and that's not the way it works. Um, and that's why he only goes up against mostly, apart from the controlled people he's in a room with, when he's in a room with what, Jordan Peterson or whoever else, they, they, they'll all they'll all back each other up in a certain way, you know. Um to 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 always be right, but when he comes up against other people to argue, well, he goes up against students, people who haven't developed their arguments yet. Most of them are woke and angry, and so don't have a sensible argument to have against him, and that makes him look even more sensible. What does he do with that currency then? And this is a good uh, examination. What does the hero Ben Shapiro do with that currency he's built of um, demolishing teenage boys and girls who have uh, been tortured by uh, society mentally and haven't got a clue how to po pose an argument? Um, well, he then creates videos where he stares at something happening on the screen and go and gives a reaction shot. It's not even like... I don't even understand why people would do it. It's just people who watch him are looking at the reaction, the non-reaction. Ben Shapiro barely shows he's constantly got the same face on. It doesn't even make any sense. So uh, these people are made to sway opinions. They don't even have to say anything. Once they've gained the collateral, people will just watch them watching a screen, and it's enough. So that's really weird, and that says much more about our hero worship than anything, that they're able to to use such a small amount of, of currency um, for something. Uh, yeah, I completely think that the Hitchens uh, were always like that, and 
course they're so intelligent and the libertarians are nearly always the first targets for intelligence. Libertarians and intelligence has the most biggest budget nowadays. So do you think Kubrick was actually revealing films um, or was part of the greater hidden scam? Yeah, the latter, again. Uh, Kubrick, I think he was really interesting, and I think it's really naive to think that he was revealing things in his movies. But he, behind the scenes, he was having parties with all these people. He was sitting behind the scenes with um, Kissinger and Khan and others, and he was listening to them talk, and he was talking with them, and they loved him because he would produce like so. Herman Khan wants to get his idea of mutually assured destruction out. 1961, he writes a book on thermonuclear war and everybody understanding, the quicker you can make everybody understand mutually assured destruction, the quicker you can um, start to, to wind down the fear generated by nuclear weapons and the nuclear standoff between the Soviets and America. And by... The time that Kissinger had written on nuclear war and foreign policy in 57, um, they realized that they had to change tactics and that people were panicking. And that panic was the most likely thing to lead to mutually assured destruction. So 1961, he makes that. 1964, Kubrick and Dr. Strangelove comes out, yeah? It's, he's in the parties with Herman Kahn, and then he makes a movie about mutually assured destruction, which uses all of these uh, people who he was hanging around with as characters. So people say, oh, you, you know, some people back then were saying, oh, Herman Kahn uh, was Doc, uh, Dr. Strange was based on Herman Kahn, because people are really that simple. They're like, ooh, that, that person who's extremely intelligent will only base one thing on one person and one person only that's not the way it works it was like loads of different parts dr strangelove had that uh futurism and that that uh, wild sort of side to him that herman can had but then he had elements of Kissinger in there too. Uh, he had elements of um, Ki one of Kissinger's uh, main mentors in there too. The um, oh, what was his name? Um, fought with him during the war. God, I can't. But uh, it's always it's always one that escapes my mind. Um, uh, it, the different different people. He bundled characters up in, as different people. Basically, what was then Doctor Strangelove, or how the uh, how the CFR taught me to stop worrying and love the bomb is what I was going to say. But but uh, what was Doctor Strangelove then? Was it a way to tell the public, look, this is the state we're in. We're in mutually assured destruction. We could kill each other any time, so we're not going to pull the uh, do it because otherwise this will happen and everything will die. So it got it even in the film, it got put down to being as simple as possible. Oh, we've created a device. Uh, the Russians have created a device. So if one nuke goes off, everything goes off. So Tesla's, Tesla's death ray, you know, that the again, the, the most simple way to understand mutually assured destruction. Now, he, even Herman Kahn and others played it out and said, well, you know, it would only be about 60% of the world's population would die if we had an all-out nuclear war. It wouldn't be all of it. And then it would get back to um, uh, relatively high numbers fairly quickly afterwards. That's what they believed. Um, but they have to leave you with something. And they used people like Kubrick for that. Uh, so 2001 Space Odyssey is, uh, is a kind of that that sort of like giving you that sort of feeling that, oh, we can have this peaceful space program where we have these exciting jobs now in space in the future. At the same time, he's hanging around with the futurists who are trying to push these movements and who are predicting all the technology so herman khan is right in uh the year 2000 and the next 200 years and that's gonna map all of that out and so it's obvious kubrick was part of the system in some way and i think it was to uh do his part to his part for sure Agree, the Milgram bystander effect 
is a common frequency that steers panoramic view of every human conflict. Socially, that's going on with transhuman eugenics agenda. Yeah, I, I think that book bup as well. You you think about the book bup. Um, you've got say ninety uh, percent of people will act. Uh, it won't be 66% of people will act under pressure with, like in the Milgram experiment because that pressure is just one doctor telling you, oh, the uh, experiment means you should continue politely and means you keep going on even though it's going to be negative for somebody else. When you put on external pressures like you had during uh, the COVID outbreak, uh, covid thing um what you got was 90 percent of people bending under that pressure because it was from everywhere it was loads of pressure that's not the you know you don't get the same you have to raise the uh, percentage of people who are affected by things um if you're looking in relation to the milgram experiment you have to up the number the more pressure there is or the less pressure there is. So if there's no doctor in the room telling you something, th there's still going to be a number of people who go all of the way, for instance. Um, for instance, uh, CBGBOMFUG Saturdays, $5 all day. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I do not know what that means. Five dollars all day, baby. That sounds good. I hope there's sticky, sticky ribs. Uh, <laughs> I saw it got that because I saw sticky carpets got into my mind. Hello, Susie Thomas. Yes, yeah, sticky carpets. Yes, yeah, sticky bits. Sticky bits. Uh, my late father was a third degree um, knight of Columbus. Best friend was an orangeman where I grew up. Uh, there was big division my father's time before that. They were hiring and socializing. Yeah, 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 completely. It's very interesting. I, I've been, I was listening to, um, oh, I'm going to forget his name as well now. Famous philosopher. Um, it's going to come back to me just as I, I, I look it up because it won't take long to look it up. It's within my history. Um, and it's someone that you all know very well. Um, Manly Hall, Manly Palmer Hall. Um, I was listening to some Manly Palmer Hall lectures earlier and he was talking about the necessity, the, the natural evolution and tendency towards making secret organizations that humans have done throughout history, uh, which would be back in the day seen as uh, cults more the, than anything, you know, like the, he was saying that they, they, in, back in Greek times, you know, the, up to 25,000 people in one event got converted to be in with it or, or uh, inducted into a secret society um and and it's a natural tendency for us to try and become better by using help and, and joint help but then it, that's fine unless it's used and against you and every single one of these societies becomes corrupt don't they so they were all friends before, just like Ukraine, East Ukraine, and and the Russians. They were friends, uh, or even Ukrainians uh, were, were friends with Russians in the eighties and nineties. And then the NGOs come in, and then everybody hates each other. It's not a surprise. Our families were very close. Didn't happen. Our families were very close. Oh man, that was uh, uh, ah right. Uh, it's from thing before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I you know some people just don't get affected by it like with the Milgram experiment or what we're talking about there it's like you know there's still going to be 33 percent of people who just don't 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 fall for it poison electric head oh, we're still talking punk here uh we're talking uh, punk and metal we're talking we talk punk and metal baby um he's a hero i can't work it out Ooh, uh -huh. I like Neil Oliver, but I don't think he's quite the courage of his conviction. He didn't object to Mark Stein getting the boot, for example. No, well, of course not. I, I mean, I know you'd like Neil Oliver because he's a nice, uh, nice speaking, gentle type of guy who seems like he'd be someone who I'd like to listen to or talk with at some point. You know, that that's what you get a feeling from. You get a feeling like, oh, he's quite a nice chap and stuff. So they use that. They put the guy who seems like a nice chap up in the place where he's going to be doing the work that they want 
to do, which is bring everybody to to listen to the nice chap. And then 99% of what he says will be fine. And then the 1% when he's supposed to stand up and have a backbone and they don't want him to, he won't. That's it. My lovely Ellen. Richard Medhurst is like that. Don't even start. Try going in the chat and typing Richard Medhurst sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Richard Medhurst, I don't, I mean, he's got a lovely different um, colored scarf every time he goes on. Really dresses up like a Palestinian in his uh, living room. It's very nice. I like it. I just don't trust that. Just looks a little bit contrived, doesn't it? Uh, how does he get away with all that he says on MSM? They need... The, the, I, I, are you talking about Neil Oliver here or George Galloway or what? Because um, they need people to... If if he says something that's objectionable to the people who aren't going to take it in, they'll turn it off and turn over to somewhere else. And they'll do that. But they'll watch him for all of the rest of the stuff. But a load of people won't turn off. They'll have gained trust, trust him. And th they need to gain trust by him saying stuff that they agree with. So he's going to say loads of stuff that they agree with. They they have they have control of all of the sides, not just one. They don't only own the people. This is a real base misconception that's so basic. They don't only own the people who you disagree with. The most important thing is for them to own the people you agree with. That's what their main function is. Is to find and infiltrate or find, create, and give you the people who you agree with. So, so, if you agree with someone, don't think that you should agree with them all at the time. Agree with them on that time you're agreeing with them. Don't give them, don't, don't make them into something they're not. Don't make them into something more than human. They're human. So they, they're going to lie, be uh, wrong, they're going to make mistakes, they're going to have errors, all of those things. Don't don't bundle them up as them being heroes. They're not heroes. They they have a message and they're trying to put it in your side of your brain. And for it, they need to speak like you. They need to say it like you. They need to use all of the lines that make you accept them. They're not targeting the people who are already against you, who already um, uh, oppose the uh, mainstream um, uh, 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 or uh, already won't listen to them. They're not interested in those people. Those people can go away. They're, they have to co-op to you. And then they'll say everything you want up until the moment that the most important thing that the masters want you to think or to move you slightly. Because another thing they'll do is present people with you. So you trust Neil Oliver. That, for, for you, you might be able to say, okay, I trust Neil Oliver, um, and he brings someone on his show. I don't have to trust that person. But most people will get to the point where they trust him so much that means anybody who's associated with him, they also trust. You see the slippery slope we go down with that means that you're basically anybody who goes on Neil Oliver's show could be there to be um, given some sort of love for you. So you go, oh, I love him. I love him all of a sudden. And you don't even know it. You don't even know. It's just boop in your mind, boop. I positive association, positive association, positive association. But the majority of it is at some point they need Neil Oliver to tell you to do something or they need to be in control of an area where they're going to tell you to do stuff on the other side. Now, GB News, they got you coming into GB News to watch Neil Oliver. At the same time, their coverage of COVID was even more over the top and fear based. Uh, then the mainstream and some people say no it was no it was no the one the bits that you want to remember weren't but the, the and they bring you in drag you in but the majority of it was really over the top headlines i mean I, when it first got uh, people were saying oh these guys are actually speaking up against it i started watching i was like well, all of their headlines seem like fear-mongering propaganda. Like everybody's going to die because of everything. And yet, at the same time, they're trying. They're, they're uh, talking like they're against it. It's very clever what they do. Very clever what they do. 
I got someone at the same time. Oh my God, that's a really weird person to be messaging me at the same time. I didn't even have my messages on. That's very strange. Um, so yeah, they, they want to get you and uh, they want you. So you get on their boat, you get on their party boat and you're like, I'm with Neil Oliver now. I'm with Neil Oliver now. I'm with Neil Oliver now, but it means you're with GB news. It means you're listening to all of the rest of this crap. It means that they'll bring on when, when, uh, uh, palace when October the 7th happened, what they do, they, they, the guy they brought on to, um, I remember present a show and give you the facts. I looked up uh, him up afterwards because I this he was also biased. He was all he was an army boy. He was all army. It was I mean they they're basically messaging right directly at you. A part of it is it, it looks military. Um, the people they have on are unbelievable. Some of them, and then they'll they'll pepper it with people who you like who will keep you going back to their channel to watch their propaganda their crappy propaganda. So what he is, is he's a front man for GB News, which is a weird organization I don't like. And saying that out loud and criticizing Neil Oliver costs me work elsewhere. I promise that. So like, share, subscribe, support me if you can. But I, it costs me work elsewhere. I know that because I've been told that on multiple occasions. That I, one, I, I won't say where, where it is because of a friend who was trying to uh, get me a gig somewhere um, on one of these platforms out there um and uh th they told him that um i was anti neil oliver and they were trying to attract him so uh, the i i know exactly like uh, yeah, telling the truth means i don't get jobs elsewhere it's not the same for neil oliver because he doesn't have to all of the time just when he they, he's malleable he's able to do it like uh, and and again all of these guys, if I get onto one of these guys' shows, I'm going to bring up something like this. That's why they don't have me up. <laughs> so so you, if you tell the truth about what the situation is, you don't get, you don't get it. Say, say something bad about Medhurst and name calling starts immediately. Yeah, but I, I mean, there's a load of characters like that. I mean, I went out with a character who was like that. You know, I mean, yeah, you all know what I'm talking about there. I won't mention her name. Uh, good evening, my lovely Snow White. Nice to see you back. How's it going? Um, I, I, I'm thinking, who is he? Uh, who's the other person? Was it someone like Cinderella? <laughs> uh, is she come with you? I love Snow White. Hello. Uh, nice to have you back in. You're always so lovely to me. Uh, the cast of the great rock and roll swindle were all servicing the Liberal Party at the House of Commons. Listen, there's, there's lots of servicing going on in the House of um, Commons. I was a squatter in London for years, uh, so we had DJs, punk bands, artists, hippies, people, bus and trucks and caravan, lots of dogs and sound systems. So you'll know a hippie will burn you in, in your bed if you cross them. <laughs> well, a punk won't. A punk will punch you in the face. <laughs> um, I saw the Smiths in Dundee. Uh, all the guys in the audience had very large tree branches stuck to their ears, stuck in their back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's some weird stuff in there. Ooh, ooh, you said you so as well as Vivian West with Chrissy Hind and more. Yeah. Garcia is MMA. I like watching a bit of MMA. I was watching a bit of MMA earlier. Some of it's all right, but there's lots of like anything that's got that much money behind it has got some real dodgy stuff going on as well. Let me um just while I'm here, let me just see if I can I can't really sort out this backdrop. I don't even know what's wrong. Well, look, I got green screen hand. Green screen hand. Marxism in punk. Yeah. It's a bit of that here and there. Um, yeah, of the Criminal Justice Act 1994 put paid our scene, free parties, festivals. Yeah, yeah. I remember um a brilliant documentary about the Exodus Collective if you know the Exodus Collective, um, they actually g found the skunk number one strain that we uh, it was called Exodus Cheese that was the original cheese plant that then got uh, basically uh, like um, 
<laughs> made love to every plant in the world. Every strain had to have cheese in afterwards. Uh, but they did that at a squat, a big squat, um, just before uh, the act came in, uh, if I remember correctly. And it was the last time that you had things like that. But they actually did good for the the, the place they were squatting in. Um, they were a bit different, the Extras Collective. Uh, I quite like those boys. Um, Phil from Pain has got half a liver. That punk rock and his basket of medicine. Your punk is like that, man. Punk is hard on the liver. <laughs> I can tell you from my all my friends have probably got gonna have a uh, bad cirrhosis of the liver. Um, I'm laughing again. That's not good. Frank discussion was gross. Yeah, uh, punks in America were anarchists. Doo -doo -doo. Margaret Trudeau frequented oh, Studio 54. Dirty dog, she was. The blues, Johnny, the blues. Yeah, I used to like a bit of blues too. Bobby Kennedy was a fixture at Studio, um, and I personally saw him go to in the orgy door. Boom! Are you talking about Big Bobby, not Small Bobby? Bobby Big Boy. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was either of them. Ah, so I, Johnny, I worked with abused children for years. You cannot mend a broken child. No, I left you to sheer. To, I know it's it's so bad, isn't it, of having to confront these poor kids after they had been through their therapy. Oh, so 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 awful, so awful. I've I I mean, once you've been through a pain like that, you connect with other people who go through similar pains. Um, or you've been through any pain like that. Um, but I, I mean, the, what you're talking about is a level up. It, 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 I found I've, I've always been someone, um, who, because of my troubles, when I talk with people, like people just, they, they know, they know you've gone through something and they know they can talk to you about their problems. So I've heard a lot of. I've heard a lot of stories and I've, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of sad, sad stories. And, um, I, I, I still see like, I, I got friends and other people who I know still suffer from trauma that they'll never get dealt with because humans have a really hard time dealing with stuff. And again, like, um, like the guy I was talking about earlier, he was, maybe talking about, um, secret societies and stuff, but like, humans one thing he was saying was humans um they tend to think they're already achieved nirvana they're already so intelligent they've already got over everything they're already strong enough to handle everything um and until they come out and realize that they're weak and they're fallible they and they they could be like uh, tricked and they could be lied to and abused then they they have no way of actually becoming better because they're too busy thinking they know everything and they're not they're gonna they're go, they, for that then they come out with like a, a trauma will come out in different ways the stress of not being able to that conflict of not knowing what's happening all of a sudden when they know all of the time what's happening it, it means they cannot manage it you know humans are we're simple things man simple things oh god yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, Ellen. So sorry to hear that. Um, uh, that's a dark story. I have a friend who suffered that. He still got trauma. Hey, listen, tra uh, trauma follows you around. You've just gotta, you've just gotta not end up letting it eat you up. I don't, you know, don't become your trauma. Don't become your trauma. Understand, you don't need it. You just don't need it. Um, you can take my oh. I don't actually need this on. Oh, let down me hair. Um, when I saw my mother fondling my little brother, I reported her. Yeah, I I I knew um a couple of people in high school. I I one girl especially who was being molested by a, a brother regularly. Um, and it, she would tell me, and even after even after she got up the courage to tell her mum, like a mum wouldn't believe her anyway, and it could just continued. Um, so it's like a really, it, 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 she got reported eventually, he got reported, um, but it, it, it's, people, especially mothers, 
can accept sometimes what they feel like they've created, you know. Um, but the, the, a mother who does that to her kids, not, not, because the majority of abuse comes from men, yeah. But a mother who does that, that's something else. That's a psychological, systematic torture. That's a breaking in a way that is just, but that is an ownership early on. That is a sign that that person has had exactly the same uh, experience, but needs to exert their power over other humans continuously. Um, and when it's a woman, that's, I mean, that destroys minds in ways that's awful. Um, I ain't got heroes left. Not after I watched them all bend over during COVID. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. He must be a bass player. The drummer teaching him. Um, oh, stop! Look at me. And what? Where is your hand? Um, I, 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 there's a lot, there's a, there is a, a lot there, Anna. Uh, my friend took me to see Iggy Pop. I left masturbation. Shouldn't be, um, performance art. No, 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 no. The Iggy Pop was a hard one. I've watched him, uh, please. Well, Anna's saying a lot. Like, uh, lightning, please. Shame on who. Come on. Ooh, ooh, too much. Prankster, another one. Look into my eyes louder. Who's watching your back? Nope. You just type yourself. Okay. Um, uh, you, wow, Anna, you're, you're just saying one. It looks, I'm sick of you. Rude. Yeah, looks like you're just uh, um, a disinfo agent, aren't you? What are you up to? Yeah, lots of comments on Twitter from Anna, um, who's saying a load of of stuff. Uh, not sure that's going to help anything. Uh, Ellen, I know it doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't. I've worked in mental health for twenty years. It's a load of nonsense. It is. Um, burnt offering. Yes, indeed. Yeah, most definitely. Ethnic cleansing in Gaza, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right, give me just one second. Let me just uh, do what needs to be done over here. Over here. Bum, 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 bum. So I'm just going over to Twitter to check the stream where I can see myself on the stream. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, that's really weird. And I'm just going to uh, bum bum bum. Right. Uh, give me just one second, gang. Sorry to be doing this during this time. All right. I'm going to have to leave it for the time being. Um, yes, so anyway, sorry, we were saying. However, working with children was heartbreaking. Um, yeah, man, that, that bit, that just, it destroys you, it does. Uh, pushing those people towards Egypt, they're determined to expel them. Is that genocide? Yep, that's what they're trying. Uh, Snow White. I do think EMDR helped enough for me to heal. Um yeah again again there's uh there's anna ts if you're uh, watching um this anna girl who's just saying stuff like where's your hand get out bro from my country um obviously this is one of the many disinfo accounts follows me around the certain accounts follow me around um, because they have to constantly disrupt anything I do. Obviously, I must be doing something right. Uh, sadly, they don't have this available in the uh, on the NHS. No doubt. Um, I have heard good things about. Listen, there's loads of um things they don't have um available on the NHS that are good for the mind. Uh, in men uh, mental health wise, it is a sham. 
real sham. Ben Shapiro, Zionist tool. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, same for Jordan Peterson. I've done uh, the Who Do They Think They Are recently? Kings and Emperors. That's what he comes up as. Uh, and Tommy and Katie. Yeah, uh, well, Tommy, are you talking about uh, Tommy Robinson and Katie um, Hopkins? Uh, I, I'm, I'm also having a little look into Tommy Robinson. Uh, find him extremely uh, interesting. I was saying last week, um, it, it, interesting that his father um, married a Jewish lady. I didn't know about that. Maybe, maybe he got angry about that. Uh, he showed his true colors, Hamish. Yes, right. Let me, uh, yes, get mask snip. There's good conversations going on, as you can see, uh, between Ellen, uh, Hamish Snow White, and others. Um, a steep learning curve for a lot of people. Oh, I, I think it's best to be skeptical until proved otherwise when it comes to these personalities who come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. But I also think that I, I don't think he came out of nowhere per se, you know. Um, I think that uh, a lot of these, um, Neil Oliver, for instance, he was always there lingering around as a tv personality that gained a lot of kudos from his his um coast to coast series and his historical stuff and people liked him he was a bit of an icon you know he was a a, a bit of a cult icon in that sense uh <laughs> late than never hamish uh was that what he was uh, trying to do with the shining Mm, the Shining was very interesting. I like, I like, I do like that movie. I mean, he's one of the best movies, filmmakers of all time, uh, no doubt. If you've got the bet, one of the best um, uh, filmmakers, you should use him if you're the establishment. So I can see why Kubrick would be used. I'm not a flat earther or anything like that, but in my opinion, nukes are fake and gay. <laughs> <laughs> Why fake something that's real? The footage is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about the power of of nukes. It it, it didn't. Some of it doesn't make any sense. And to be honest, H Hiroshima um, and Nagasaki were awful, though. I mean, but it was paper houses. The Japanese had paper houses. Everything got just like completely and utterly flattened really, and burnt. I mean, everything burnt. Most people died of burns, you know. Um, polymorphing uh, seems like a summoning, summoning ritual, Ellen. Uh, JV, you never heard of CBGBs in the Brewery, New York City? No. Every American punk band has played there, um, plus other bands like Talking Heads. And owned by Hell's Angels. I might have heard about it, but I'm not sure. Um, I saw Ramones at CBGB's. Oh, yeah, NYC. Yeah, oh, the Ramones. Oh, there's another one that I got brought up with. God, love it. Right, I'll go on for a little bit longer. Um, I better get through some of these messages, so I'm going to skip through uh, a couple of these. Blank Generation, great album. Yes, okay. Uh, matches scars and UN flags outside his apartment. What's that? Are you talking about? Um, yeah, we know what we're talking about. Polymuffing, uh, the shining was filmed in a very haunted hotel and didn't have much to do with King's book. Very strange movie, stranger than Eyes Wide Shut. Both had satanic ritual symbol symbology. Eyes Wide Shut was very interesting, it was kind of part uh, based on Hod Dibbin's <laughs> adventures, and I find Hod Dibbin hilarious. I mean, trust is earned over time. Yes, trust is earned over time, but. Just, just look at the information individually. I, I just, I'm just in for that. Not, not jumping on, not saying, oh, I trust him. So the information I must trust. I trust information, it, and I judge that myself. I think everybody should. We live, we learn. The deceitful in mind blowing. Yes. Any update on Richie Sunak, the most spineless PM of the UK? Much similar to Obama, well crafted. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think he's as, as well crafted as Obama. He's such a, I mean, that's so awful. He's such an awful human. He's I, I, he's going to be out. He's going to be not head of the conservative once he loses the next election. Um, and w- everything he does now, this is why I wasn't surprised to see him do the, the speech outside um, Downing Street because they're going to, anything that they can be shot down for. Now, they'll use Richie Sinek for, why not? Why not? Why not get him? I never heard of Neil Oliver. You're lucky, aren't you? Um, definitely never trust a hippie. Yes, 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 yes. Remember the Exodus parties? Awesome. They, they now they were proper parties. How far? Ooh, we know not that bad now. Why sudden? Hello, Gulfan Ahmed. How are you? Salam alaikum to you, my friend. Why sudden has Biden? Why has Biden suddenly gone against Netanyahu? I think the U.S. is going to make him the scapegoat and let the ICOG charge him. And uh, I think I think that this is just the the oh we'll support you outright up until the point when public opinion and the PR companies tell us we can't do it anymore. It's election season, and then we'll go against you and gain kudos from it, and then you'll probably have to like slowly wind it down a little bit and stop we'll have to wait another five years before you start it up again maybe three years this time maybe two years you know um it's just a temporary uh election move it's a, it, it, and it was predictable as well you could predict it uh we were a group of sound systems and bands mainline bedlam spirals circ- uh, circus warp fear teachers and all the bands heavy with drugs and bu- booze yeah drugs and booze those were the days. Um, the rich kids took uh, lots of pictures and waited 10 years and sold us out to be consigned to a book on Shoreditch coffee table. Yeah, that happens. Rich kids always do that to every scene. Yes, they do. There was even a history of rave in the um, Saatchi gallery that makes me puke. I know, it's so terrible. When they, they, oh, they, they just can't help themselves, though. They just cannot help themselves. Very sad, uh, uh, very dark. Thanks, JV. Going to listen later from the beginning. Oh, thanks for, for being here, um, Shalini Samson. Thank you. Thank you, Shukran Shukran. Ah, Malu! Been dancing tonight. Wasn't aware. Fuck transitional oligarchy. I like Malu. She's very nice. She's a very nice woman. Um, just stopping by to say hello, my friend. No dualism. Hello. Hello back straight at you. It's Josh W from... Uh, ah, all right. Hello. And um, uh, I, and I love you. It's, I think he means it's Josh Walkos. Uh, he, he's a good guy. I like him. Um, Kelly Pierce. Anna sounds like ugly troll living under a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're partly a uh, sent out by uh, my ex. I'm sorry, I think that's I think that's the way it's going. I've noticed it on. Uh, it's the same theme, the same sound, the same just nah, 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 that I get from this one group of people who are attached to someone I was once with, um, and are now running an operation or campaign against me as best they can. But now. That that person can't say out loud because um, they've been caught out too way too many times, um, and unfortunately, all of their backing of the one person is blown up in their face and all of this sort of stuff. So I'm just being attacked. There's actually a couple of accounts set up to smear me still, um, and I think those are going to have to get. Uh, pulled down by that same person very soon because she's trying to um, get me to play ball. Cracky just spent five minutes at the back door shouting for the cat who was sat behind me. <laughs> well, that's what happens. Uh, that's what happens. Right, so gang, listen, that was a uh, good two hours. We're on the good side of two hours. Um, loads of people have come in. Really, really glad I got through like nearly every single comment. Then I skipped through a, f- a couple of them, but got through most comments. And I like this. I like. I do like it. But I think we got to be as as the audience grows. Probably got to get um uh more more people and be a bit more organised with it. Oh, here we go. Uh, again, Marion Hyatt. Hello. 
When will the games begin? Conspiracy Quizmaster. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I really do. I really do want to do a conspiracy quiz, but I need help. I am going to need help with that. And I got, I, I'm, I'm distracted at the moment by trying to ha having to try very hard to make a living so that I can um, pay bills and rent and stuff. And that's really, I find that really difficult at the moment. So it's kind of like, unfortunately the x spaces got kind of put on the back burner for a while but i'm getting back to it soon and hopefully very soon i'm actually thinking um i may like run a season with a prize at the end or uh, a, a choice of prizes so um and uh, seeing as I am um, pretty good with family trees, I think probably a free family tree and a video for the family, uh, which is worth a fair few hundred pound, uh, would be possibly a good quiz um, prize. So uh, I got a few other things in the going, but I think maybe running a season of conspiracy quiz quizzes that, that end with, I, I got to think of the format and how to do it, Really love this. Thank you for bringing it back up because I really do need to. I really do need to. Um, da uh, listen, all of you, DC, Ellen, Kelly, Hamish, all of you guys who come here and have a conversation with me, thank you for, for being here with me. I really do. Uh, it was a fast two hours. It was. I didn't stop speaking. Pets win prizes. <laughs> See, I much prefer these comments than... than some of the other, uh, the other, um, that woman on Twitter was having a go at me, Ooh, telling me to get off. Ooh, uh, thanks, great. For, uh, well, no, thanks. For, uh, really interesting, really interesting to talk about heroes and then get on to talking about punks because that really has been a letdown for everybody, hadn't it? Um, right, you guys, thank you again for joining me on this ask me anything we'll be doing this every sunday unless unless i uh for some reason uh can't or i'm away uh, on the 22nd if you're in britain on the the weekend of the 22nd so in a couple of weeks time i'll be performing live on stage <laughs> that sounds silly to me um i won't be i won't be play it won't be uh music it'll be um i'm part of the t n t confest uh where they've got me to go and and it's much more this one is up near derby way near derby leicester sort of way um it's gonna be much more uh a, a kind of like a truther training course with comedy attached. So there's comedians, there'll be gigs in the night, but a lot of it is going to be workshops on the Sunday. Uh, and I'm probably going to be talking about truth, trust, um, family lines and other things. Uh, I haven't quite decided because I got a few things I'd like to speak about to people, or at least like, give people a, a sense of or an understanding of. So if you want to come to that, tickets are already available. And um I'll post up uh on my uh on the website uh tomorrow a code that if you do want to get you can get some money off the um off the tickets as well. But that's going on on the weekend of the 22nd. So Saturday and Sunday um I'll be there. So if you want to come along to that, I'd be really happy to meet you. I I am uh I I've 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 been lucky enough already have gone uh, gone over and uh had meals at a couple of houses and stayed at a house here and there uh of people who uh have either been supporters or like my work and um i'm extremely like i'm a real person so <laughs> watch it if you try and make friends with me i might actually make friends <laughs> i'm well into that but um, if you want to come along to that, you're welcome. I will give you a load of uh, love. I thanks everybody. Um, don't eat yellow snow. Well, I just don't know about that because you know what if someone poured cider on it? <laughs> no, I just go. I won't eat. I won't. I won't do it. Good night, everybody. Good night. Um, in Kegworth, yes, it's in Kegworth. It's in the Kegworth Hotel, um, I believe, and it will be fun. If you're there, come along. Um, I haven't had a car since July and I'm stuck. 
I can't remember where you are, Dark Commission. Maybe, um, who knows? Maybe, maybe we could uh, grab you on the way. <laughs> but who knows? Anyway, thank you, gang, for coming. And I will end it there. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night.